Hi, church family. My name is Chuck, and my wife, Shalene, and I uh, are the pastors here at Desert Song, and we are so blessed that you are tuning in this morning. And this morning is a little different, not just for us, but for all churches around Oregon, and that we are bringing church to you instead of you coming to us, which makes me thankful that church isn't just a building. It is so much more than that and consists of all of us who have put our faith and trust in Jesus and have followed him. Well, these are crazy times and it's been a crazy week indeed for everyone. And we want you to know that here at Desert Song, we are taking it seriously. And we do believe uh, that it's important for us uh, to, at this time, just kind of keep our space and our distance. You see, we as a leadership would just be heartbroken if we knew someone contracted the coronavirus because of one of our meetings or gatherings. Do we have faith that God is greater, that he is bigger? Absolutely, not just the faith, but we believe it because his word tells us so. And he has proven it time and time again. We want you to know that we are working on various ways to bring church to you, to your home, right where you sit, on your smart TV, on your mobile device, on your laptop, whatever you're watching us on. And so we're looking for ways to bring church to you. While we are physically practicing social distancing, we want to encourage you to explore and find new ways to socially interact and keep in touch with each other, to talk, to laugh, to encourage, to pray, to study together. All these things can be done without us being in the same physical room. And I am so thankful for technology, which now allows us to be able to do that. And so we encourage you to uh, come up with creative ways to be doing that. And don't be afraid to reach out to someone. We encourage you to continue to look and help those that are in need. And maybe they're in a physical need of some sort. Maybe they just need a word of encouragement. Again, you have life circles and take that opportunity to step in and and be God's love and help to someone else in this crazy time of crisis. And whatever you do, do not stop practicing or do not start practicing spiritual distancing. We don't want any of that. There is no spiritual distancing. Jesus tore the veil in two so we would have direct access. And we do, anytime, with anyone, any moment. And so we encourage you to spiritually continue to press in uh, to what he has for us. We at Desert Song, we want you to know that we are here to help. And we are setting up what we call a Desert Song Cares Team, DS Cares Team. And there are already individuals that have uh, contacted us who want to be a part of that. And they're willing to bring supplies if you need it. They're willing to call and pray with you. They're willing to do other various things. And so if you need those type helps, reach out to us. If you want to be on that team, reach out to us so we know and know how to plug uh, you into that. Currently, our hygiene bank is open and operating on Tuesdays from 2 to 6. We have changed up how we do things there, but we are still handing out hygiene supplies like deodorant, shampoo, and yes, even that prized toilet paper. (laughs) So again, if you are in need, we encourage you to just contact us. And, and then we will reach out to you and get you the help you need. You can contact us at info at desertsong.org. Um, and if you want email updates, that's great. Send us an email to that too, and we will get uh, you on our email list. We know what is going on is unsettling, and it's impacting almost everyone in various ways. And one of the first and best things we could do is to continue to pray. Continue to pray. And 
seek God, seek his will, seek his face, seek his solution to this, seek his hope for whatever your situation may be. Maybe you just got laid off. Maybe you're a business owner and well, there is no business. Maybe you're sick or have a weak immune system. Or maybe you know someone personally who's contracted the coronavirus. Pray. Pray. Invite others into that process to pray with you. Our God is greater. Our God is bigger. Our God is stronger. And he has a plan through this, even when we don't see it, even when we don't know it. We just need to keep asking, keep trusting, keep following. And he will be faithful, I believe, to get us through this. So many of you have been uh, consistently faithful in your giving. And thank you so much because we know that these are challenging times. And we know that some of you have taken a financial hit. So thank you for your faithfulness. Um, For those who want to give, I've been texted and asked about this. You can uh, snail mail uh, to our church, your tithe if you like, or you can go to our website, desertsong.org, or download the Tithely app and find our church. But again, thank you. And more than anything, we want you to know we are here for you. And we want to partner with you. We want to minister not just with, but also to you. And we should be ministering to one another. And so thank you for the opportunity for us to do that as a ministry. And thank you for allowing us to not just be in your lives, but for the time being in the future, letting us be in your homes as well. We're gonna jump into some worship here. And so I encourage you uh, to lift your hands, to sing like no one's listening even though the family member next to you probably is, uh, it's okay. And we just want to encourage you, as you lift him up, he is always faithful. As we do that and focus on him, he lifts us up in that process of worship, of lifting him up. So let's enjoy some time of worshiping our Lord, our Savior, Jesus. All right. Well, good morning or afternoon, evening, whenever you choose to tune into this. We just want to be praising God today in the midst of this crisis. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is James. I do worship here at Desert Song. And whether or not you're normally at Desert Song or you're just tuning in with us uh, today, we're just super grateful to have you here. Super grateful that you're setting aside time to worship, to spend time in God's presence with the people around you. Um, And we just want to worship together. We want to worship Jesus in spite of what's going on. And just remember that he is Lord and Savior no matter what's happening in the world around us. So let's just sing praise to him this morning together. When you walk into the room Everything changes Darkness starts to tremble At the light that you bring When you walk into the room Every heart starts burning Nothing matters more Than just to sit here at your feet And worship you We worship you We love you We'll never stop Can't live without you Jesus We love you We can't get enough all this is for you, Jesus. Oh. And when you walk into the room, sickness starts to vanish, every hopeless situation ceases to exist when you walk into the room 
the dead begin to rise Cause there is resurrection of life in all you do We love you And we'll never stop We can't live without you Jesus We love you We can't get enough All this is for you Jesus We love you We can't live without you, Jesus. We love you. We can't get enough. All this is for you, Jesus. We worship you, we worship you. God, we just declare that you're greater than the sickness. You're greater than the pain. You're over all the governing bodies in our country and our world. God, we sing the same songs this morning that we've sung before, but in a different context and with a different understanding. And we mean the words that we sing this morning. We love you and we're not going to stop. When you enter a room, sickness does vanish. The hopeless situations around us cease to exist. And God, for that, we praise you this morning. Come and consume, God, all we are. We give you permission. Hearts are yours, we want you, we want you. Come and consume God, all we are, give you permission. Hearts are yours, we want you, we want you. Come and consume God, all we are, we give you permission, our hearts are yours, we want you, we want you. Come and consume God, all we are, we give you permission, our hearts are yours, we want you, we want you. Consume God, all we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you, we want you. One more time, come and consume. Come and consume God, all we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you, we want you. We'll never stop, we can't live without you, Jesus, we love you, we can't get enough, all this is for you, Jesus, oh, Jesus. With a melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone, and I'm no longer a slave to fear. 
I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God From my mother's womb, you have chosen me, and your love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family, and your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no child of God I'm no longer slave to fear I am a child of God Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together today, to worship you, to sing these love songs to you that involve your truth and not just what you do, but who you are. And everything you do flows out of who you are. Everything you do flows out of your purpose and your plan for us. I thank you that you are such a relational God and you desire for us to have relationship with you and with each other. Show us how to continue to do that in these crazy times. Continue, Holy Spirit, to draw us in. That instead of pulling back and taking a break, we press in to you, who you are, what you're doing, what your ways are, and what you're inviting us into and asking us to do. Lord, we thank you for your word 
again this morning. And we thank you that you desire to not just speak to us, but you desire to speak in and through us. And you desire for this to take hold in our lives so that we can be the people that you have called and created us to be. We pray that you help us connect with your word. We pray that you help us understand your word. And we pray that you help us apply your word and also give it away. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus. Well, church, as you know, we have been going through a series called Signs. And this morning, we had lined up for Jeremy Fields on our teaching team to come and teach uh, with you today. Um, but we changed things up because of, of all that's going on and just the different format. The good news is, is that Jeremy is still going to give that message a little bit down the road. But this morning, I want to bring to you encouragement out of the Word. And it just so happens to be, well, the story that we were going to look at anyway today. And what I'd like to read to you is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 6. And it reveals to us our next sign or miracle that John walks us through in his Gospel. Here's what John writes uh, in the Word. He says, so here's the story. When the evening came, now remember that they had just got done feeding the multitudes, the 5,000. And they were already exhausted. They were already beaten down. They were already at the end of their rope. And the people, when they saw what Jesus did by multiplying the bread and fish, they uh, said, well, we got to make him king and ruler. And Jesus knew this. And he's like, I, I got to get out of here because this can't happen. And so he takes his disciples down to the shore and sets them off in the boat, and, and he goes off to a quiet place to, um, to pray uh, and be with the Father. So it's the disciples, and the disciples have gotten into the boat now. And verse 16 of chapter 6 picks up, When the evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into the boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew extremely rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat. Now, mind you, they're in the middle of the lake. And they see Jesus approaching the boat, walking on water. And it says that they were frightened. But Jesus says to them, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat. And when they did, scripture tells us that immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading, immediately. What an amazing story. What an incredible uh, miracle that Jesus did. But why would Jesus do that? I think it's really fitting for not just this morning, but where we're at right now as a country and what we're facing, how this is impacting us. And so I just want to unpack that a little bit with you this morning. I'm wondering if you have ever had a near-death experience. You know, I, I never have, so I don't know what that's like, but I've heard stories um, I, I know of a story of a youth pastor who took his youth group up to ski in the slopes of Schweitzer in, in Canada, and he had about 20 students with him, and lo and behold, three of the students decided to make their own path down the mountain with their snowboards. <laughs> Not a great idea, and they got lost. And overnight, they knew that a storm was coming in, and so they bore down. One of the kids knew some survival skills, so they took their snowboards, and they built a snow cave. By the way, this was on Dateline several years ago, and I know this youth pastor personally. And so they build a snow cave, and they, 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 they stay in this snow cave overnight. They don't have water. They're cold. It's dark. It's cold. The weather's coming in, and a search team is out looking for them. Well, eventually the sun rises and these boys knew that they needed to get moving. 
And so they got moving down the mountain. And they were lost. They were unsure where they were heading and, and where they should be heading. But eventually they came into a clearing that had a cabin. And they get to the cabin and they knock on the door. And the person who opens the door says, Oh my goodness, I have been out looking for you all night. <laughs> Now, I don't know how near death they were, but I got to tell you, I, I would be scared. As a parent, I would be scared. As one of those students, I would be a little scared. One of my favorite shows, and I don't believe it's on anymore, but it's a show called I Shouldn't Be Alive, right? And it's these stories of, of just incredible events where it, it could be life not just threatening, but life taking. And in some of these stories, some of the people don't make it, but usually at least one do. You know, and I, I, I got to think that these disciples may have felt like that, which is kind of odd because they were rough, burly fishermen who had gone through storms on the lakes and seas before. So this was nothing uncommon for them. But in this case, 12 men who knew how to navigate the waters were frightened. They were in the middle of the lake at about 3 a.m. We know that because the Gospel of Mark tells us that uh, about this story. And this storm, this storm was getting the best of them. And I wonder about us and the current storm that we're in. Is it getting the best of you? Is fear starting to crash in on your boat? Are you feeling like you are out in the middle of the lake and you're rowing and rowing and rowing and getting no progress and the storm is just getting worse and worse? Why well, I have good news for you today. God, through his word again, has a solution and something for us to grab onto. You know, in the current storm that we're in, you'll find people at various areas. Some feel fine. Others are concerned and others are very, very scared. And what I have found is that we need to allow people to have room for where they're at, but we also need to be pointing ourselves towards Jesus and his hope and his solution that he has available to each and every one of us. And we have the opportunity not just to be encouraged, but to be an encourager in this journey that we're all on, in this storm that we are all in. What our scripture story shows me today is this. Jesus is sovereign. That's probably not something most of you, it's not new to you, but maybe for some of you that is new to you. I want you to say that with me out loud. Jesus is sovereign. Do you believe it? Do you know it? Do you know what that even means to say that and believe that? The basic definition of sovereign is, uh, it says, supreme ruler. But then it goes on to uh, tell you what the adjective uh, for that is. It describes what it does. And it says that a, a, a sovereign being, a sovereign person, uh, is possessing supreme or ultimate power. Now, I want you to say that again. Jesus is sovereign. So knowing what we just read, both in our story and in that definition, hopefully it takes on a whole new meaning. And another way of explaining it, Jesus is in full control. Full control. And it may not look like it. It may not seem like it. It may feel like everything is coming unraveled. I know it did for these disciples. And maybe it does for you right now too. But I'm telling you, even when this world and this culture that we live in feels like it's crashing down around us, Jesus has it under his control. Jesus has a plan for it. And he has a plan for his people, those of us who have put our trust in him. And so with this portion of scripture, I believe it shows Jesus' sovereignty. And so that's what I really wanted to look at real quickly uh, here in the next few minutes. And it's this. The first one is this that I see in scripture, the, the text that we just read. What it reveals to us is this, is that Jesus is sovereign over our dilemmas. 
Jesus is sovereign over our situations and circumstances. And sometimes we don't always think that way or embrace that. But I encourage you today to embrace that Jesus is sovereign over all of our dilemmas. Even this current one with the coronavirus that we're all going through. Jesus is sovereign and he's got a handle on it. You know, for the disciples, they were in a place of peril. In, in the Gospel of Mark, it says that they were rowing hard and fearing for their lives. Like I said just a couple minutes ago, maybe some of you feel that way. That you've been rowing hard and, and fear is starting to creep in. You're not too sure what to think about this or what it's going to look like or how it's going to impact you. Maybe you've been laid off. Maybe you've been sick. Maybe you have a weak immune system. Maybe you know someone. And all of a sudden you're like, well, what, what are we going to do? God has an answer. The disciples were in a place of peril. They were rowing hard and fearing for their lives. And we often are too. But here's my observation. Is, is, is one of the things that happens is that we find ourselves in peril when we disobey the Lord. We know that story from Jonah. But you know something else? We can find ourselves in a place of peril even when we're obeying the Lord. And like, well, what good is it obeying him? Because he's going to help us through it. Even when we find out, and we're like, well, the disciples did exactly what he, they, you know, he told them to do. And then here's the storm. And the storm provides an opportunity for Jesus to reveal again, not just who he is, but another aspect and that he is a God who is sovereign. And while the disciples were in a place of peril, it says that Jesus was in a place for prayer. And here's how you should be encouraged by this, is that while we are going in the midst of our storm, Jesus is interceding for us before the Father. It's what he was doing here. And I believe he does it again and again and again for us, regardless of our situation or circumstance, regardless of the storm that we're in and that we're facing. Jesus is for you. He's interceding for you. He is going before the Father on your behalf. And Jesus has a plan. Jesus is sovereign over our dilemmas. But there's a second one that I noticed too, and that is this. Is this. Jesus is sovereign over our deliverance. He is sovereign over our deliverance. He has complete power and authority over our deliverance. And you know what? He initiates the moment of deliverance. In the case of the story, we're told it's about 3 a.m. They have been rowing for hours. It is 3 a.m. And Jesus comes to them on the water. <laughs> like some of us will go, why did he take so long? Why didn't he come sooner? Jesus, if only you would have back then, a couple days ago, we're going to hear that coming up in the Lazarus story. But you know what? Jesus has perfect timing. And you see, just at the right time, Jesus steps in to the story because he is sovereign over their deliverance. Romans 5, 6 says this. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. That's me. At the right time, not only did he do that, but at the right time, he revealed it to me and invited me into it. And he does the same for you. One of my favorite portions of scripture is found in 2 Corinthians, and Paul writes this in the sixth chapter. He says, at just the right time, I heard you. And so this is, he, he's speaking on God's behalf. At just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Don't you just love that? God is sovereign over our deliverance. And his timing is perfect. And he initiates the moment of deliverance. He also illustrates the means of deliverance. What do I mean by that? Is that Jesus came to them. His means for deliverance for every single one of us is that he came to us. God came, Jesus stepped down from his throne, became a baby, became a man. He came to us. And you know the reality is this, Jesus still comes to us. 
What did he do when those disciples were in peril in the middle of the lake? He came to them. Jesus comes to them and he comes to us. Jesus walking on the waves is the picture of perfect poise. The disciples, they were being tossed about, but Jesus was not. The disciples were totally afraid and fearful. Jesus was not. The disciples are on storm-tossed seas, but Jesus is on solid footing as waves crash around him and he walks towards them. Jesus also issues the message of deliverance. What do I mean by this? Well, it's not just him coming to them. It's not just uh, him, him illustrating that, that he is there, but it's also that he issues a message of deliverance. And in this story, catch this. It says they were, the disciples were frightened and they were afraid. And they see Jesus walking towards them. I can't believe that helped a whole lot because they had never seen this happen before. But it was happening now. And Jesus says this, knowing full well, these guys have been rowing for hours, knowing full well that they were scared out of their minds. And he gives this message. He says, in the midst of this raging storm, it is I. <laughs> you see, that phrase there is a phrase that should encourage and build our faith. The great I am says, hey, it is I, God, Jesus, your deliverer. And then he banishes our fear with the next statement. After he says, it is I, he says, don't be afraid. <laughs> you see, our faith should be built up because we know that it is Jesus. And then fear should be extinguished because Jesus himself says, don't be afraid. This is huge. Not just for the disciples, but for us today. If you are fearful of something, maybe it's this coronavirus, maybe it's something else. Jesus is saying to you, I am. It is I. Don't be afraid. The third thing that I see in this portion of Scripture is that Jesus is sovereign over our destination. Jesus is sovereign over our destination. So Jesus is sovereign uh, over our um, di dilemmas. He's sovereign over our deliverance, and he's sovereign over our destination. What do I mean by that? Well, as soon as he steps in the boat, what does it say? It says that the boat was then on shore. <clears throat> They've been rowing for hours, and I, I don't even know how that begins to work, but it happened. Scripture records it, so I believe it to be true. And what it tells us is that Jesus is sovereign over our destination. He has a destination for us, and he empowers our progress to get to that destination. Well, someone can say, well, the, the storm was, you know, doing anything but empowering their progress. True. But as soon as Jesus steps into the narrative, as soon as he steps into the story, as soon as he steps into our story, he empowers our progress in our life. And not just our plans and our purpose, but his. You see, in being sovereign over our destination, he also enables our purpose. One of the things I love is that this is also recorded, this story in the Gospel of Matthew. And in Matthew 14, um, Jesus, it, it, it's written that he's, he's down on the shore with them in this, this uh, portion of the story and how, how Matthew writes it. And he says this to his disciples. He says, go to the other side of the lake. You know, that's one of those lines that can be easily missed and that we don't pay much attention to, but we must pay attention to it because it talks about, and in it, talks about the progress and the purpose of our destination. You see, what Jesus did not say to his disciples on the shoreline is, hey, guys, why don't you roll out, ro roll out into the middle of the lake and drown? Jesus never says that. What he says is, get in the boat and go to the other side of the lake. 
What happens in moments of fear is that we can easily forget what Jesus said. This is one of those sentences in Scripture that can get easily overlooked. But maybe there's something in your life. You're in the midst of that storm and you have forgotten what Jesus has said. You have forgotten how he uh, empowers and enables your progress and your purpose and your destination. And, and maybe you're in the middle of that lake and you're like, I had no idea it was going to look like this. This isn't what I thought. The, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in fear for my life. This isn't going to work. This is, uh, this is all falling apart. And when those thoughts and feelings and things, and they're very real, but when they creep in, what they do is they begin to put a stranglehold on our faith. And all of a sudden, we forget what Jesus said. He says, let's go to the other side of the lake, not let's go out in the middle of the lake and drown. Jesus has a solution. He has a purpose and plan, and he has a destination for each and every one of us if we would just put trust. I am so thankful for that line because I've had to remind myself of that so many different times as I've gotten in the middle of, of, of following him in obedience and things just start falling apart. And it's easy for me to get panicked, fearful, for me to start trying to grab back the control and to fix things and make things right. <laughs> and I forget the very words of my Savior, the very plan and purpose of my Savior to say, Chuck, our destination is not here in the middle of the lake. Our destination is that other shoreline. And I, Jesus, it is I, don't be afraid. I'm going to take you there. I got to believe that message is for someone else today too. And if you are listening today, if you're watching today, hear it, receive it, embrace it. I want to just wrap up with just giving you just a few action steps. I said this story is also told in Matthew 14. And in that, in, in, in that gospel, Matthew writes about Peter's interaction with Jesus in the midst of this storm. And so Peter sees Jesus walking on the water and realizes, and, and hears Jesus say, it is I, don't be afraid. And so Jesus is like, Lord, if it's you, call me out so I can come out to you. <laughs> what a great, incredible part of the story. Why John left it out, I don't know. Maybe it's because he felt he was the one loved by Jesus and this focus was on Peter, who knows. Uh, but anyway, it's in Matthew and it records Peter walking on the water. And in this portion of scripture in Matthew, I believe our action steps are there. Our action steps on how to respond, not just in this crisis, but any crisis. Our action steps to help us understand that our sovereign God, our sovereign Savior, uh, desires for us to partner with him, to trust him. And here's what I see is I see, G I see Peter and he is looking for and he's looking to Jesus. And our action step is that we need to keep doing the same. We need to keep looking for Jesus and to Jesus in the midst of this crisis and storm or any other one that comes our way. Peter's eyes were fully fixed on Jesus. He wasn't looking at the other 11 guys. He was looking at his Savior, his Deliverer, his Sovereign Lord who had come for them in the middle of the lake. So as Peter is looking to Jesus, he conjures up enough faith, a little faith. But here's the thing is that a little faith is still better than no faith. And Peter then exercises his faith. And faith is simply taking the next step. And for Peter, that next step was to get out of the boat. To get out of the boat. <laughs> and someone can say, well, Peter had great faith to do that. Maybe. But I have a feeling he was working through that process of faith. And that little faith was growing. And that little faith compelled him because of who it was he was walking towards and had his eye on to step out of that boat. And maybe you've been afraid to get out of your boat. And Jesus is asking you to trust him. And faith takes that next step. What is that next step in your life that you need to take? 
Where do you need to trust him in your faith journey? How is he calling you out of the boat? What situation or circumstance is he calling you? Just not out, but towards him. And so Peter does this. He, gets, he takes the next step. He gets out of the boat. And faith, here's what happens. When we do this, faith unleashes the supernatural. Peter walks on water. You see what happens there? When we trust our sovereign God, our sovereign Savior, when we not just place our faith in Him, but then we live by faith, it unleashes the supernatural. And what can I, I can tell you right now is we need the supernatural to happen in our lives, in our communities, in our families, in our world, and not just with the coronavirus. Yes, the supernatural needs to happen there, but it needs to happen not just there and here for right now, but it needs to happen always. And what it takes is his people being willing to step out in faith and trust a sovereign God who is leading us sovereignly with all power and all rule. Here's the thing. Part of that story is that then Peter begins to look to other places and he begins to get fearful. And as these things begin to happen, it says that he begins to sink. It's what fear does every time. Fear is looking to sink you. Fear is looking to capsize your boat. Fear is looking to drown you. But again, God's word tells us that God does not give the spirit of fear. It says that he gives the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. A mind that is wrapped around faith in Jesus and who he is and what he's come to do. Maybe you're listening to this, watching this, and you've placed your faith in Jesus. That is awesome and great news. Thank you. But maybe you're watching this today and you're fearful, you're worried. What I want you to know is that God has a plan. He, not, and again, not just a plan through this current situation and circumstance and virus that we're walking through, but he has a bigger plan. He has a plan for your dilemma. And one of those dilemmas was that we were born into sin and we had embraced it. God had a plan for that. One of the realities is that we were in a place of needing to be delivered, to be rescued to be forgiven. God had a plan for that. Maybe we don't know where we're going or what we're supposed to do, what our destination is. God again has a plan for that. Just like in this story that we read. And how that journey starts is by you placing your faith in Jesus. And you don't need a pastor. You don't need a, a priest. You don't even need to be in a church building. You could be alone in your living room, in your car. And in that moment, just say, Lord, I want to trust you this way. I want to place my faith in you. I want to step out in faith and follow you and watch the supernatural happen in my life. I want to receive your forgiveness and I want a clean slate to live a new life, to have a new life. John said that he wrote these miracles and he only picked seven of them. And he did that to reveal who Jesus was and is. To let people know, but also that he did that so that you would believe. And that is our hope and prayer for you again this morning. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I know that it looks different um, but I'm thankful and we encourage you to continue to press into God's word and don't be fearful in this time. Instead, choose faith. Listen to God's voice. Understand that he has a solution, that he is sovereign over our dilemmas, that he is sovereign over our deliverance, that he is sovereign over our destination. And he not only has a plan, but he has a plan for you. And he asks you now to trust him, to partner with him, to get out of the boat and take a step of faith and let your faith grow 
and unleash the supernatural in your life and those lives around you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. And again, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are drawing us deeper and further into your plan. And I thank you that when it seems like everything is crumbling around us, you still have a plan and you are still in ultimate control. Help us know that, believe it, embrace it, and live it, and encourage others to do the same. I pray for your comfort, Jesus, and your peace in the midst of fearful times. And I thank you that while the water is raging around us, while the sea is going crazy, you are walking in perfect calmness towards us. And you remind us, it is I, Jesus. I am with you. Do not be afraid. Thank you for this. I pray for your blessing and favor and protection upon all. And may you be glorified in us and all that we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are a maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are here. Working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here. Every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are a maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are a maker, miracle worker, Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. That is who you are, that is who you are. To 
just want to remind you in this moment as we're singing this song together that our God is consistent. He is unchanging. He is steadfast, never failing. That whatever we might be facing right now, whatever you might be sitting there and facing right now and a result of the things going on around us, maybe it really has nothing to do with what's been going on. In fact, it's been happening for a while. We serve a consistent, faithful, loving God. And as we're about to sing the next part of the song, He's working even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it. He's working. He's right here in our midst. He's faithful. And when we place our identity in Him, when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, when we really make Him Lord over our life, when we take down the things that would take His place, we are going to be okay. We are going to have security in His name. We're going to be in a place, regardless of the things happening around us, where we are provided for where we have a foundation that is built upon the solid rock of Jesus. And so if you're in a place of desperation right now, regardless of what that has to do with, I just want to encourage you, sing this next song, whether you feel it or not, sing this next part of the song as an act of faith. Sing these words, contemplate what they mean. We'll hang out on that section for a while. And let's sing this as an act of faith together because God will break through your circumstances. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working No Stop. You never stop working. You always make it. Miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You always make it. Miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, 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 that is who you are. Hey, again, thank you so much for tuning in this morning, worshiping with us, taking in God's word. If you are looking to connect with us in greater ways, you can do so. One of the easiest ways is through our website, desertsong.org. 
And on there, you're going to find a whole bunch of different ways to connect. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube. Um, also, you can get signed up uh, for just email connection. And so, and you can do that at info at desertsong.org. And when we get that and receive that, we can put you on our email list. Or maybe you have a prayer request. Send that in too. We have faithful men and women who are praying for you. And as I said before, we are going to continue to bring church to you. So in the next few days, in the next few weeks, you're going to see uh, our Echo Student Ministry come to you. Our Desert Song Kids come to you. Our life groups uh, go online so that more and more can join and be a part of. So there are various ways. And so we encourage you to stay connected and keep up on these changing ministry times for us here at Desert Song. And again, we appreciate and love each and every one of you. And we are praying for you. We're going to get this through this together. Jesus, again, is saying, go to the other side of the lake. And so we're going to trust him with that pro uh, process, with that journey. And so love you. God bless. We'll see you soon.